governmental power slash functions. Municipality of San Fernando v Firme. Facts. Petitioner is a municipal corporation existing under and in accordance with the laws of the Republic of the Philippines. At about 7 a.m. of December 16, 1965, a collision occurred involving a passenger jeepney driven by Bernardo Balagot and owned by the estate of Macario Nebras. A gravel and sand truck driven by Jose Manandeg and owned by Tanquilino Velasquez and a dump truck of the petitioner and driven by Alfredo Baslick. Several passengers of the jeepney including Loriano Banana Sr. died as a result of the injuries they sustained and four others suffered physical injuries. Private respondents instituted an action against Nieveres and Balagot before the CFI. The defendants filed a third-party complaint against Petitioner and Baslick. The complaint was then amended to implead Petitioner and Baslick. Petitioner raised as defense lack of cause of action, non-suability of the state, prescription, and negligence of the owner and driver of the jeepney. The trial court rendered a decision ordering the petitioner and Baslick to pay the plaintiffs. The owner and driver of the jeepney were absolved from liability. Petitioner filed an MR which was dismissed for having been filed out of time. Issue. 1. The court committed grave abuse of discretion when it deferred and failed to resolve the defense of non chewability of the state amounting to lack of jurisdiction in a motion to dismiss. Held yes ratio, in the case at bar, the judge deferred the resolution of the defense of non suability of the state until trial. However, the judge failed to resolve such defense, proceeded with the trial and then rendered a decision against the municipality and its driver. The judge did not commit GAD when it arbitrarily failed to resolve the issue of non-suability of the state in the guise of the municipality. However, the judge acted in excess of his jurisdiction when in his decision he held the municipality liable for the quasidlic committed by its regular employee. The doctrine of non-suability of the state is expressly provided for in Article 16, Section 3 of the Consti, to wit. The state may not be sued without its consent. Express consent may be embodied in a general law or a special law. The standing consent of the state to be sued in case of money claims involving liability arising from contracts is found in Act No. 3083. A special law may be passed to enable a person to sue the government for an alleged quasidlict. Consent is implied when the government enters into business contracts, thereby descending to the level of the other contracting party and also when the state files a complaint, thus opening itself to a counterclaim. Municipal corporations are agencies of the state when they are engaged in governmental functions and therefore should enjoy the sovereign immunity from suit. Nevertheless, they are subject to suit even in the performance of such functions because their charter provided that they can sue and be sued. A distinction should first be made between suability and liability. Suability depends on the consent of the state to be sued, liability on the applicable law and the established facts. The circumstance that a state is suable does not necessarily mean that it is liable, on the other hand, it can never be held liable if it does not first consent to be sued. Liability is not conceded by the mere fact that the state has allowed itself to be sued. When the state does waive its sovereign immunity, it is only giving the plaintiff the chance to prove, if it can, that the defendant is liable. Anent the issue of whether or not the municipality is liable for the torts committed by its employee, the test of liability of the municipality depends on whether or not the driver, acting in behalf of the municipality, is performing governmental or proprietary functions. According to City of Kokomo vs Loy, Municipal corporations exist in a dual capacity, and their functions are twofold. In one they exercise the right springing from sovereignty, and while in the performance of the duties pertaining thereto, their acts are political and governmental. Their officers and agents in such capacity, though elected or appointed by them, are nevertheless public functionaries performing a public service, and as such they are officers, agents, and servants of the state. 
In the other capacity the municipalities exercise a private, proprietary, or corporate right, arising from their existence as legal persons and not as public agencies. Their officers and agents in the performance of such functions act in behalf of the municipalities in their corporate or individual capacity, and not for the state or sovereign power. It has already been remarked that municipal corporations are suable because their charters grant them the competence to sue and be sued. Nevertheless, they are generally not liable for torts committed by them in the discharge of governmental functions and can be held answerable only if it can be shown that they were acting in a proprietary capacity. In the case at bar, the driver of the dump truck of the municipality insists that he was on his way to the Nagalian River to get a load of sand and gravel for the repair of San Fernando's municipal streets. In the absence of any evidence to the contrary, the regularity of the performance of official duty is presumed pursuant to Section 3 of Rule 131 of the Revised Rules of Court. Hence, we rule that the driver of the dump truck was performing duties or tasks pertaining to his office. We already stressed in the case of Palafox, E.T. Alves Province of Ilicos Norte, the district engineer, and the provincial treasurer that the construction or maintenance of roads in which the truck and the driver worked at the time of the accident are admittedly governmental activities. After a careful examination of existing laws and jurisprudence, we arrive at the conclusion that the municipality cannot be held liable for the torts committed by its regular employee, who was then engaged in the discharge of governmental functions. Hence, the death of the passenger tragic and deplorable though it may be imposed on the municipality no duty to pay monetary compensation. Proprietary power slash functions. City of Manila v. Intermediate Appellate Court. Facts. Vivenciosto. Domingo, Sr. died and was buried in North Cemetery which lot was leased by the city to Irene Sto. Domingo for the period from June 6, 1971 to June 6, 2021. The wife paid the full amount of the lease. Apart, however from the receipt, no other document embodied such lease over the lot believing that the lease was only for five years, the city certified the lot as ready for exhumation. On the basis of the certification, Joseph Helmuth authorized the exhumation and removal of the remains of Vicencio. His bones were placed in a bag and kept in the bodega of the cemetery. The lot was also leased to another lessee. During the next All Souls Day, the private respondents were shocked to find out that Vicencio's remains were removed. The cemetery told Irene to look for the bones of the husband in the bodega. Aggrieved, the widow and the children brought an action for damages against the city of Manila, Evangeline Suba of the city health office, Sergio Mallory, officer in charge of the North Cemetery, and Joseph Helmuth. The latter's predecessor as officer in charge of the said burial grounds owned and operated by the city government of Manila. The court ordered defendants to give plaintiffs the right to make use of another lot. The CA affirmed and included the award of damages in favor of the private respondents. Issue, 1. The operations and functions of a public cemetery are a governmental, or a corporate or proprietary function of the city of Manila. Held proprietary ratio, petitioners alleged in their petition that the North Cemetery is exclusively devoted for public use or purpose as stated in Sector 316 of the Compilation of the Ordinances of the City of Manila. They conclude that since the city is a political subdivision in the performance of its governmental function, it is immune from tort liability which may be caused by its public officers and subordinate employees. Private respondents maintain that the city of Manila entered into a contract of lease which involved the exercise of proprietary functions with Irene Sto. Domingo. The city and its officers therefore can be sued for any violation of the contract of lease. The city of Manila is a political body corporate and as such endowed with the faculties of municipal corporations to be exercised by and through its city government in conformity with law, and in its proper corporate name. It may sue and be sued, and contract and be contracted with. Its powers are twofold in character public, governmental, or political on the one hand, and corporate, 
private and proprietary on the other. Governmental powers are those exercised in administering the powers of the state and promoting the public welfare and they include the legislative, judicial, public, and political. Municipal powers on the one hand are exercised for the special benefit and advantage of the community and include those which are ministerial, private, and corporate. In connection with the powers of a municipal corporation, it may acquire property in its public or governmental capacity, and private or proprietary capacity. The new civil code divides such properties into property for public use and patrimonial properties, and further enumerates the properties for public use as provincial roads, city streets, municipal streets. The squares, fountains, public waters, promenades, and public works for public service paid for by said provisions, cities, or municipalities. All other property is patrimonial without prejudice to the provisions of special laws. Thus in Torio v. Fontanilla, the court declared that with respect to proprietary functions the settled rule is that a municipal corporation can be held liable to third persons ex contractu. Under the foregoing considerations and in the absence of a special law, the North Cemetery is a patrimonial property of the city of Manila. The administration and government of the cemetery are under the city health officer, the order and police of the cemetery, the opening of graves, niches, or tombs, the exhuming of remains, and the purification of the same are under the charge and responsibility of the superintendent of the cemetery. With the Acts of Dominion, there is no doubt that the North Cemetery is within the class of property which the city of Manila owns in its proprietary or private character. Furthermore, there is no dispute that the burial lot was leased in favor of the private respondents. Hence, obligations arising from contracts have the force of law between the contracting parties. Thus a lease contract executed by the lessor and lessee remains as the law between them. Therefore, a breach of contractual provision entitles the other party to damages even if no penalty for such breach is prescribed in the contract. Issue. 1. The city is liable for damages held, yes ratio all things considered. Even as the court commiserates with plaintiffs for the unfortunate happening complained of an untimely desecration of the resting place and remains of their deceased dearly beloved. It finds the reliefs prayed for by them lacking in legal and factual basis. Under the aforementioned facts and circumstances. The most that plaintiffs ran ask for is the replacement of subject lot with another lot of equal size and similar location in the North Cemetery which substitute lot plaintiffs can make use of without paying any rental to the city government for a period of 43 years, 4 months, and 11 days corresponding to the unexpired portion of the term of the lease suit upon as of January 25, 1978 when the remains of the late Bivencio Sto. Domingo, Sr., were prematurely removed from the disputed lot, and to require the defendants to look in earnest for the bones and skull of the late Vivencio Sto. Domingo Sr. and to bury the same in the substitute lot adjudged in favor of plaintiffs here under. As regards the issue of the validity of the contract of lease of grave lot number 159, block number 195 of the North Cemetery for 50 years beginning from June 6, 1971 to June 6, 2021 as clearly stated in the receipt duly signed by the Deputy Treasurer of the City of Manila and sealed by the City Government. There is nothing in the record that justifies the reversal of the conclusion of both the trial court and the intermediate appellate court to the effect that the receipt is in itself a contract of lease. Under the doctrine of respondent superior, Torio v. Fontanilla, Petitioner City of Manila is liable for the tort ES Act committed by its agents who failed to verify and check the duration of the contract of lease. The contention of the Petitioner City that the lease is covered by Administrative Order No. 5, Series of 1975 dated March 6, 1975 of the City of Manila for five years only beginning from June 6, 1971 is not meritorious for the said Administrative Order covers new leases. When subject lot was certified on January 25, 1978 as ready for exhumation, 
the lease contract for 50 years was still in full force and effect.